Hello YouTube friends, I just bought this. Yeah, after the blackouts in Europe and the upcoming zombie apocalypse, I wanted to buy the cheapest and shittiest emergency flashlight. Since I didn't have any better ideas for a video today, I want to take it apart piece by piece to see how it works and what's inside, just like when I was a little Italian kid who knew nothing about electronics and destroyed all the things he found around the house. This gem of technology, which cost a whopping 5 euros, was supposed to charge itself during the day with this tiny solar panel. In the absence of the sun, however, it should charge with this fantastic crank. The light is emitted by three white LEDs. It doesn't seem to emit much light, but today there is sunshine in my workshop and it feels like summer. As I begin to take apart my guinea pig, I would like to remind you that if you subscribe to my channel, your life will become great in an instant. I'm serious, I'm not bullshitting. 99% of my followers have found true love or won the lottery in less than 6 weeks. Think about it. I think it's a good investment. We're almost there. I was able to open the shell and finally see what's inside. I can already see four gears sticking out of their seats. I'm sure putting them back in the right position will be complicated. Only the last screw that attaches the PCB to the body is left. That's it. Now we can finally see what's inside. The first things I see are a circuit board, which we will analyze later, a DC motor used as a generator, and a small battery. This is a 3.6 volt, 40 milliamp hour nickel metal hydride battery. The first thing I want to do is measure the battery charge. 3.55 volts. We can say that this battery is almost 50% charged, because a nickel metal hydride battery with a nominal voltage of 3.6 volts, consisting of three cells of 1.2 volts, is fully charged to about 4.2 volts and can be considered discharged at 3 volts. Now I want to dolder the solar panel and the generator to see how much power they deliver and how they charge the battery. I can already see one thing I don't like. As you can see, the wires from the solar panel are connected directly to the battery, without any charge regulator. It is very common to find these superficialities in very cheap products, unfortunately. Let's take the soldering iron back and do older the panel. Now I have to figure out how to remove it from the body. Two hours later. Eureka! 72229L. Obviously there is no datasheet online. Fine. I'll have to make something up to figure out how much current this little panel delivers. The simplest thing I can think of is to connect a resistor to the panel and measure the voltage with a multimeter. I am using a 10 ohm resistor. Usually smaller resistors are used to measure current but I had this resistor on the table and I am too lazy to look for another one. It is very sunny today. Let's go outside and measure the panel power. The voltage across the resistor changes from 0.05 volts when I point the panel directly at the sun to 0.03 volts. Now it has clouded over and indoors the multimeter reads no voltage. Even when I turn on the light, the voltage is zero. Thanks to our friend Ohm, we know that our solar panel can charge the battery with a current between 3 and 5 milliamperes. The good news is that these currents are almost equal to the trickle charge current of our battery. If you are interested, I talked about this in an earlier video. The bad news is that this method will take 12 hours to fully charge the battery in strong sunlight and with good panel placement. But it can also take 20 hours or more in less than optimal conditions. These seem like very, very long times to me. It is time to test our crank generator. To test it, I need a bridge rectifier like this one. 
For those who do not know, a bridge rectifier is a simple circuit that converts alternating current into direct current. It consists of four diodes arranged like this. Luckily, I had one already made. Hooray for that! Now all you have to do is solder it at light speed. As I wrap everything up, making sure the wires don't interfere with the gears, I realize it's terrible time to reassemble the gears. It took me 12 minutes to put these four gears back in the right order. I should have taken pictures and memorized the position and order of all the gears. I am often very inattentive and my distraction costs me so much extra work time. Friends, don't be like me. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Using tweezers, I place the wires neatly and secure them with a little hot glue so they won't move when I turn the crank. The sound seems correct. We have done a long and good job. At this point we solder our 10 ohm resistor after the rectifier bridge. As with the solar panel, I place the multimeter on the ends of the resistor and turn the crank as hard as I can. I am in too uncomfortable a position. I think I can do better. Okay. The peak voltage reached by this little generator is about 1 volt, so a current of 100 milliamps. Since it's not directly connected to the battery like the solar panel, let's take a look at the circuit to see how it's connected. The generator terminals go directly to the rectifier bridge, as we explained earlier, which converts AC to DC. Immediately after the bridge we find a 2.2 ohm resistor. Here the connection splits and one wire goes directly to the battery and the other to the switch and then directly to the LEDs. In short, when the switch is open, the alternator will charge the battery at what I consider to be a very high current. If the generator can deliver 100 milliamps with a 10 ohm resistor, it will probably charge the battery with more than 400 milliamps with a 2.2 ohm resistor, and I don't like that. Then, when the switch is closed, the generator acts directly on the LEDs, increasing the current and brightness. This is also not the best in my opinion. At this point I would have to draw meaningless conclusions from this meaningless video. While I am talking to the robotic voice, you can see in the background how good I am at reassembling this bizarre flashlight. I definitely took apart a product that was not of high quality and very cheap. I was hoping to find something more interesting about the circuit. Unfortunately, I never try videos before I make them, I shoot and edit them instinctively. For this honesty you should subscribe to my channel. The operation of this product is not correct in my opinion and so many technical choices have been made just to keep the price low. This does not exclude that a child would have a lot of fun with this torch, especially to understand that energy can be generated from the sun and kinetic energy and not only from disposable batteries or diesel generators. Besides, it occurs to me that it would be nice to use this small solar panel and crank generator for other projects. Perhaps by modifying the simple existing circuit with a better researched and designed one, a more efficient flashlight could be made. If you like the idea, please write F-A-L-L-O in the comments, and if you have any hints or ideas on how to do it or what components to use, please write. As I am still assembling the flashlight in the background, I apologize for the silence of the last months. I hope to be able to post a more interesting video soon, but unfortunately it will take some time to get all the components. I will leave the video now and stop talking. A big hug. See you soon.